What is up, Boba Fett fans? Welcome back to my channel. I'm sick, I'm hoarse, doesn't matter. I have to talk about this episode of Boba Fett. I've not been doing it week to week, but I finally caught up last week. Really enjoyed the episode, shifting the focus onto the Mandalorian, but this time around, it's not only Mando. We have Mando and a lot of other characters to talk about today. We're gonna go through the entire episode and talk about each integral moment, what it means for the rest of this series, and what's going to happen next. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Be sure to comment your thoughts down below if the comments work. They didn't work on yesterday's video. And if you enjoy this video and my extremely hoarse and terribly sounding voice, drop your thumbs up. I appreciate it. It's like nails on a chalkboard. I probably have the flu, but you know what? Boba Fett. <laughs> so at the beginning of the episode, we meet up with the Marshal, Cobb Vanth himself, as Timothy Oliphant returns and takes out three bad guys with his blaster, but sends word to whoever sent them like a badass should. So really enjoy his character. Love seeing him back, to be honest. And the question we're asking ourselves at the beginning of the episode is what is in that chest exactly? But then we go from Timothy Oliphant to Mando picking up where we left off in the last episode, arriving on what seems to be this beautiful forest-filled planet. And guess who was there to greet him? None other than R2-D2. Now, I had an idea. I had a feeling that we could see Luke Skywalker in this episode, but the second you see R2-D2, the smile that takes over your face, you kind of know what you're in for. But I didn't know how much we were in for, so it was great to see R2-D2, the Mandalorian, obviously looking to give his gift to Grogu. Now, Grogu is there, training with Luke Skywalker, and we finally get to see these two together. I saw Luke, and I freaked out so much that I lost my voice. Now, that, that's been going for two days, but let me tell you guys, that was one of the coolest moments arriving and seeing the construction of the Jedi Temple. What we see later on in the new trilogy, it's a beautiful sight to see because we know what is to come. But the more they talk about Grogu and the idea of training him, I'm thinking to myself, why don't we see him in the new trilogy? Obviously, they didn't have the idea for the show. But when we get that decision posed to us at the end of this episode, we kind of have an idea as to which direction he's going to go. But that's a big decision, and it's huge implications on the rest of the franchise, basically saying, if you don't train with me and take Master Yoda's saber, which was one of the coolest. I mean, there were so many incredible parts of this episode. I was freaking out when I saw it, but if you don't take this lightsaber and you do take the Mandalorian's gift, well, that means you are essentially bound to him instead of me. So that is a massive decision. My voice, it's gone. So back to the training, Grogu lifts one frog, Luke lifts a bunch of frogs, and every time Luke does something really cool in this episode, we get his music that plays in the background, and I found that to be uh, just the nicest touch. The second you see Dave Filoni directed this episode, you automatically know that he puts his life and soul into it, and that's exactly what he did, because out of all of the seasons we've gotten so far, Mandalorian and Boba Fett, this may be the most lore-infested episode yet, but we get some great conversations between Luke and, well, really Luke, but kind of Luke and Grogu saying his name was Yoda. He was small like you, but his heart was huge. He would speak in riddles, all of these beautiful things that we know and love as Star Wars fans, just hearing that repeated and uh, seeing the really solid CGI on Luke Skywalker, even compared to when we saw him in The Mandalorian. It looked good then, uh, and it starts to look a little more funky when he begins to move, but even then, I was so impressed with what they were able to do to make him look great and, for the most part, sound really good. It was just it was nice to see him, not only see him, but see him in action. See him training, training with Grogu, accessing his memories and seeing what looks to be a flashback of Order 66. So we're getting an idea, at least we're starting to get an idea as to where Grogu was at that point in time. And of course, in the next season of Mandalorian, I'm sure we'll see more of that. Oh, another great line was, don't try, do from Luke. So he's taking the role of Master Yoda and training this young looking Master Yoda. Just the fact that it's all come full circle in that way. That's one of the most beautiful things about Star Wars, the way things can come full circle. And this is one of the best examples we've seen yet. But not only do we get Luke Skywalker, we get Ahsoka. Mandalorian lands. Ahsoka is there. And basically telling him, listen, Grogu misses you. And if he sees you now, 
then he may be distracted from his training as we're getting more training scenes. Luke with Baby Yoda, Grogu, I keep want to say Baby Yoda, Grogu on his back running through uh, the forest. And then, of course, we get our classic training remote testing his reflexes. We finally get to see Grogu uh, do some impressive things and, and slowly learning the ways of the forest, which is what you like to see. And then that conversation between Luke and Ahsoka, uh, where she also references, you know, the fact that Luke kind of sounds like his father. She's also very familiar with that family, which she says in the episode. Just some great lines, but when we get that conversation between those two, Luke says, what should I do about Grogu? And she just says, trust your instincts. Like, you have to make sure Grogu is doing what he is meant to be doing. Is that train to become a Jedi? Right now, it's looking likely that he returns to the Mandalorian because he's faced with that decision at the end. Uh, but then we get back to Boba Fett. And... It's funny because this show, The Book of Boba Fett, is really feeling like The Mandalorian 2.5 right now. A lot of people are going to take issue with that because the best episode before today's, obviously, was the last episode, which really didn't feature Boba Fett. And in this episode, you really don't get Boba Fett. So part of me doesn't like the fact that it's overshadowing Boba Fett's show. But at the same time, this episode is one of the coolest things we've ever gotten from Star Wars. Whether that be the cameos, seeing old characters return again, the interactions between characters we never thought we would see interact. So it's a little bit of a give and take, but if it takes that to get what we just got, I'm okay with it. Then we return to what they are calling uh, Freetown now, and uh, Cobb Vanth gets to have a conversation with the Mandalorian. Uh, Mando is essentially saying, listen, I'm trying my best to recruit you without sounding desperate, but we need people on the ground because we have that conversation with Boba and everyone standing in that room. It's about to go down. A war is on the horizon. But as soon as Mandalorian leaves, we find out that Tatooine belongs to the Syndicate as long as the spice keeps running. Is this Dune? We see Cad Bane. And up until then, I was holding it together fairly well, but we see Cad Bane. As soon as we get that shot, in the distance, I see that hat, and I'm thinking to myself, that's Cad Bane. That's Cad Bane. And as soon as we get that confrontation, a classic Western standoff, you immediately know, fans of the character, know that it's it's not good for the other two involved. And I saw uh, the marshal and kind of his sidekick of sorts. I'm like, that dude's dead. He's dead. And he got shot four times. I have a feeling Cobb Vanth could still be alive. He only got shot once. It looked like in the shoulder. And they come to his aid. They're like, ah, the other guy's dead. He's, <laughs> he's dead. But Cad Bane tells them, listen, you all are under our control now. And the look that he gets is a look that tells me they are completely on board with what Mando came and said. But the inclusion of someone like Cad Bane at the end of an already jam-packed, lore-filled episode was a great inclusion, and it sets us up for some massive stakes for the next episode where hopefully everything starts to come together and the focus shifts back to Boba Fett, right? As much as I'm loving everything going on, I do want to get back to and maybe, you know, explore the character a bit more because, again, I've liked the show thus far, but I haven't loved it. Not on the level of The Mandalorian. And then The Mandalorian comes in and the show gets better. So if we could get what we're getting now from specifically Boba Fett, that I'm going to be happy. But the stage is set for the next episode, and I am so thrilled with what we got in this episode. It was incredible. And then at the end, like I said, Grogu is faced with the decision, do I take Master Yoda's lightsaber, or do I take the armor that was forged for me from the Mandalorian? It is a it's an intense decision. That's all I'll say. It's a crazy decision. I think he's going to go with the armor. I think he goes with Mandalorian because, again, I'm just curious to see where Grogu is in the midst of everything we've seen in the future. There's just a lot that goes into it. But my question to you all is your excitement level. Where's it at right now? How are you feeling about everything? that you just saw in this episode. If you guys enjoyed this video, I wanted to do this last week. I said, you know what, this week's the week. And then of course, everything going on, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling horrible right now, but that episode made me feel 
so much better and i appreciate you guys sticking through um me talking just now <laughs> but i just had so much i wanted to say um you guys are the best i'm going to try to get some rest for the rest of the day uh, appreciate you big time for watching and i'm probably going to go watch this episode again and get my wife to watch it with me i'll see you soon